Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and we're continuing our study on embedded systems design. We are looking at timers, and in this video, we are going to look at configuring a timer overflow. And this time, we're going to choose a clock as the source for our timer, but we're also going to put the clock or the counter into 12 bit operation so that the overflows happen quicker. OK, so let's take a look at how <clears throat> this design is going to come together. We are going to use timer B0 and we are going to choose a clock, which is 32.768 kilohertz. And we're not going to divide it. <clears throat> and this is, you know, the slowest clock that we can really get. We could slow it down by dividing it. But instead, why don't we do this? Let's just instead of leaving the timer in 16 bit mode, let's change it to 12 bit mode. <clears throat> and what does that do? Well, what it's going to happen is that the timer overflow period is the amount of time that it takes to go from 0, 0, 0, 0 up to its highest value. And if it was a 16 bit value, you would go from 0, 0, 0, 0 to FFFF. <clears throat> but this, what we're going to do is we're going to change it to be a 12 bit timer. And so that means it's going to count from 0, 0, 0, 0 up to FFF. Okay. And so when we calculate the timer overflow period, we're going to take the period of the clock, which is one over the frequency, and then we're going to multiply it by the number of counts. In this situation, it would be 2 to the 12th. <clears throat> so if you do that calculation, you get 125 milliseconds. So what we're going to do in this example is we'll toggle the LED every 125 milliseconds using a timer overflow interrupt. And that will happen. It'll go on, on and off every 2 so basically transition eight times per second, okay? So this is what we're trying to do in this experiment and let it, let it rip. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and fire up a new uh, CCS project. <clears throat> and if you did the example in the last video, you notice that uh, a lot of this is gonna be the same, but I'd really encourage you to type all this stuff in again, okay? Because you just, when you first learn it for the, you know, initially, <clears throat> it, it just helps to type it in line by line. You don't have to do this every single time. You can copy and paste prior, prior programs that you have. But just the first couple, it really helps you to, to remember what is going on. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and let's configure the LED. So I got to go ahead and set the direction of port one. So set port one bit zero to output, and that's LED one. And so I'll do that by doing a bit set, eight bit operation pound. I'll use the mask bit zero, and that's in register port one DIR. Again, that comes from <clears throat> the header file, so I can use these descriptive labels. And then what I'm gonna do is let's set its initial value to a zero. I'm going to do bit, so go ahead and say clear bit zero of P1 out. I'm going to do clear LED one initially. And then let's go ahead and turn on the digital I.O. system by clearing the lock LPM5 bit in the PM5 power module 5 control zero register. <clears throat> and that turns on digital IO. <clears throat> okay, and now that was setting up LED one. And now let's do set up the timer. So let's do set up timer. And let's think about what we're going to do. So the recommended the recommended steps here are we're going to first clear the timer <clears throat> by writing to TB clear. All right, so we're going to go bit set. And now these are all 16 bit operations because these are 16 bit configuration registers. And I say TB clear, and that's in the TB zero CTL register. So this clears timer <clears throat> and we do it by writing a one. That's just the way it works. We found that in the data sheet. And now remember all these little uh, definitions here, TB clear, these are masks that are defined for us in the include file. Same thing with TB zero CTL. All right, and so now <clears throat> let's go ahead and select a clock as source. And the way we do that is we use another very descriptive mask, which is bitset.w, and we say pound T 
tbssel underscore underscore a clock. And that is also in tb0ctl. Okay, so ctl. Okay, we got it, we got it. We'll get our comments all lined here so it looks pretty. Okay, so now I've got that chosen as my source, and that's not Bix, it's bit set, set. <laughs> so <clears throat> now let's go ahead and put it in continuous mode. And remember, continuous mode is how we tell the timer to run forever in continuous. So continuous, and that is again in the TB0CTL register. So we'll go ahead and say <clears throat> continuous mode. <clears throat> That one's tough. Well, I'll just leave it like that. Okay, and now we have our new command, which is we have to put this into 12-bit mode. So how do you do it? There are two bits that are in the CNTL register. Not register, the bits. So the CNT, CNTL bits within TB0 control register, if we set them to 0, 1, it will put this timer into 12-bit mode. By default, these come back at 0, 0, out of reset, and it's 16-bit mode. So we have to manually set the least significant bit. Well, wouldn't you know it, they have a bit mask for us already defined called CNTL underscore one. And that's just one that I chose to use in the TB0 CTL register. And this puts timer into 12 bit mode. Okay, so that right there was the new instruction. And now we're ready to set up the IRQ. All right, so think about this. We just did it, we cleared the timer chose the clock source, put it in continuous mode, and put it into 12-bit mode. So at this moment, we have set up everything we wanna do here. We are leaving the dividers at, at divide by one because that's the default. Uh, and there you have it. All right, so now we're gonna set up the, <clears throat> the IRQ. First thing, let's go ahead and let's, <clears throat> let's go ahead and, and do the local enable. So we'll do bit set w. And, and the bit mask name is TBIE, and that's also in the TB0CTL register. So this does local enable for timer overflow. And since the control register is TB0, it's doing timer B0. Okay, so that's how we tell it. And then we're gonna go ahead and let's do the global enable. I'm gonna do it differently. I could do this, E-I-N-T. Uh, but I can also do this. I can also do bit set dot word, and I can do the GIE bit, which is a mass set up in the include file in the status register. So this works also. This is global enable or maskables. Okay, and we'll just sh show you this way because it works. And then as always, I like to clear the flag. So let's go bit, cl bit clear, and we're gonna do uh, T B. IFG, okay, timer B, interrupt flag, and that's also in TB0 CTL. Okay, so this is clear flag. All right, we got it. So there it is. Now this set, it's ready to go. Everything's running at this point. And now we're going to put a main looper together that does absolutely nothing but just spin. So it doesn't do anything because all of the functionality is handled in the interrupt service routine, which is what we want to do next. Let's go ahead and grab a little comment header here. I do this and I'll do uh, interrupt service routines and we're gonna have one of them. And I'm gonna call it ISR for interrupt service routine, TB0 and then I'm gonna do overflow. And what are we trying to accomplish? Well, every time the overflow happens, it fires an interrupt and what I wanna do is toggle LED1. So I'm gonna go toggle LED one, and I can do that by simply saying exclusive or bitwise operation, bitewise operation, because it's a bit port. And I'm gonna do pound bit zero in the P1 out register. So I just toggled it. And now all we gotta do is clear the flag and get out of here. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy from up here. So this is my buddy right here. Go ahead and say, thank you, clear, bit clear. And that's it. Now I just return from interrupt. That's it. Okay, last thing I need to do is now that I have the address of my interrupt service routine, I need to go down to my interrupt vectors and initialize that. So if you remember, 
the overflow for timer B0 is in dot int 42. And then this is going to be timer B0 overflow vector. And then I'm just going to drop in the uh, interrupt service routine name. Okay. I slap that buddy down there. And all right, let's go ahead and see what happens. Let's go ahead and compile this up, see if we have any errors. You know, you, you do a lot of typing, so the typos are very common when you start using so many masks. Okay, so we're gonna hit this thing and off it goes and it's running, everything's great. And so I got my board plugged in. And again, this is gonna be not, this is gonna be a lot faster than last time. So I'll have my stopwatch on and see if, if we can see it, but we should be able to see it, you know, so it's gonna be, here we go, let's see what happens here. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> All right, look at that. Now, is it going on and off eight times per second? On and off eight times per second is basically on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. So basically, it should flash on four times per second. So is it doing that? Let's see if I can say it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it's close. It's close enough. All right, it's awesome. We did it, congratulations. That is setting up the timer as a 12-bit counter using a clock and using a timer overflow to trigger an interrupt and then toggle LED one. All right, congratulations, uh, and that is it. As always, support my channel by subscribing, and goodbye.